Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're going to have a look at how to handle volume processing on the entire track. You'll often find, particularly when you get towards the end, you're mixing, you might have added automation to tracks. It becomes really difficult to actually change the volumes of MIDI notes or audio events once you've started applying automation. Because basically you get this effect where if you try to change the volume of a track, you can't. So you can't do it via the volume slider. You have to do it on the notes data itself, either the MIDI notes or the audio events. I'm going to deal with MIDI first because it's the easiest to deal with. And just to illustrate the point, we can rattle through this because this is really pretty straightforward. I've got a single MIDI part selected here. I can click in the event window, uh, select all of the notes with control A, and then I can scale those notes vertically. That's really straightforward stuff. Just as a matter of interest, can you see as I'm moving this slider up and down, all of the velocities are all moving identically. Just bear that in mind because when we come to look at audio, you're going to see a slightly different effect. Uh, it'll look different to that. The problem comes if you want to process the entire track all at once. Let's say we've got this massive track uh, selected and we want to select all the events. Well, I can't do the same thing. I can't just select all of those notes and then drag up and down because as you can see, I'm only editing one of the MIDI parts. I can, however, open the, the logical editor. So this is the, the regular logical editor. There's a project logical editor. We'll have a look at that later as well. And here you can see that I've got type is equal to note. So it's just going to operate on the selected MIDI notes here. Value two is the notes velocity as part of the MIDI standard. And we're going to add 10. Now if I click apply, that's going to add 10 to the velocity of every single selected note. Just bear in mind that that's not necessarily a completely universal volume increase. If you've got something already at or near 127, which is the maximum velocity, you're not going to be able to extend past it. But I'm talking about common sense here. You can also do exactly the same operation on multiple tracks. I can select two tracks and do exactly the same thing. Select all of the events, select all of the notes and perform the same logical operation. So MIDI is pretty straightforward. I think the problems often come when you're dealing with audio events because they're a little bit trickier. Okay, here's the second scenario where we're dealing with audio. Got all of the automation events on our tracks. And if we want to operate on a single track, that's really easy. Just use your range tool uh, to select events that way. Alternatively, you could right click on the automation track, select all events. That's going to accomplish the same effect. And then simply move vertically. Now then, can you see that as I scale those events up and down, they're stretching? Well, they only appear to be stretching. They're actually being increased and decreased by a fixed amount in terms of decibels. But decibels are a logarithmic scale. For every six decibels, you increase the volume of something, it doubles, the volume doubles, which means those increases get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that change is represented in this, in this view. That's why it appears to be stretching, but it isn't. I can demonstrate that fairly simply by taking a record of three of these nodes. I've got a minus 3.01, a minus 14.1, and a minus 7.59. I'm just going to write all of those down. And then I'm going to choose that range and increase the automation levels upwards. Now I'll take a note of their new values. 3.67, minus 7.38, and minus 0.92. And you can see that rounding errors aside, if I subtract one value from another, they've all been increased by 6.7 decibels. So don't be fooled by the fact that everything appears to be being stretched, it isn't. There is a stretch function, it's in the middle here, scale vertically, that's a percentage-based thing. Maths diversion aside, let's get back to the task in hand. We want to increase the volume of multiple tracks simultaneously. We've just done it once with the range tool, but if I um, select two tracks, and select all of the events on both of those tracks, the range tool doesn't appear to work. It's only operating on one track. However, if I could press the control key down on my keyboard, now 
they do work. We can also achieve a similar effect using the project logical editor. Using this algorithm, if the media type is automation and the property event is selected, then we can trim and we can multiply or divide by any number we want. So if we want, we want to double the value of every automation node on a track, then we would multiply by two. Now, as, as things stand, actually, this won't work because if you have selected regions, uh, the project log logical editor doesn't see them as selected events. Look. Whereas if I click out of the events and then select them using the regular selection tool, they go gray with these highlighted boxes. Now I'm performing the operation and I've just doubled the automation value um, of every one of those automation nodes. Finally, possibly the easiest solution, but it is a bit of a hack, I suppose, because you're not editing the automation directly, is to alter the game structure of the audio events. So now I'm gonna pick the tracks themselves, control click, select all events. I'm gonna pick up this gain line and simply drag it up and down. And you can see all of the events that I've selected are being edited. So that's fundamentally baking into the event itself, the clip gain. Just obviously make sure you don't go past zero dB or you're gonna be clipping it. But that is a really easy way to edit the volume of multiple audio events simultaneously. So multiple different ways to, uh, to crack the nut. Hope that's been useful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you wanna check out the Patreon link in the description below or click the join button to become a YouTube channel member, that would be awesome too. Thanks very much for watching.